it's about to be good and we're gonna give god the best praise open up your mouth and say
Now somebody begin to call on him and begin to petition him. We invite you in the room. We invite you in the room. It's you that we want. It's you that we want. For you are our desire. Yeah. God, you are our desire. Oh. oh, oh. So we say.
hearts are lifting up My heart is ready to receive A blessing from you A blessing from you Our hands are lifted, even in anger. Our hands are lifted, though we surrender. We still are taken, Lord, we are broken. Our hands are lifted, and we need a blessing from you. Lord, we need a blessing from you. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Hey, 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 good evening, everybody. Welcome tonight. One, two, three, one for the Father, hey. one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit in the three or one. Can I get a witness in the house? Hey. Hey. <laughs> Excited to be here. I got my gear on, my North American Division hoodie. Youth director says, I love haystacks. I drive buses and do all of that. I, I'm ready to go, JD. I'm ready to go. And we got some, some sunshine with us tonight. Hey, we got some sunshine with us tonight. Look who's here Amen. with us, y'all. By the way, my name is James Doggett Jr. And I'm excited to be your co-host tonight along with Madam President. And then we got somebody who came all the way from the West Coast, which is the That's best right. host. What's yes. Going on? Can y'all real quick, can you give a shout out to Pastor Hannah Nia Ruff? Say what's Ooh. up, Pastor Ruff. Give him, give him a shout out in the comment section. How are you feeling, sir? What's up, fam? What's up, fam? I am I'm excited to be here. Man, my cup is running over. Uh these brothers have been throwing down. Yes. I mean, woo! There's some good stuff. And and Dr. Paula, I'm repping OU. Oh yes. You. Hey, we raising money for OU, and I want people to remember Oakwood, Oakwood, Oakwood. Yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. Right. Yes, sir. Oh, 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 he's feeling it tonight. Well, since we're talking about wardrobe, man, I just I came in. I'm an entrepreneur. Okay. I don't. Yeah. No, so it works. It works. It doesn't work. Okay. It Listen. Works. It works. Let Let's do this, family. Uh oh. Let's do this. I would like for each of us to take a moment to just, can we just clap our hands for all of those who've been tuning in? Y'all, listen, we appreciate you guys. Thank you for being with us. We're just at night three. We got three more nights after this to go, but we want to give some quick shout outs. Can we give real quick a big shout out to Joanne? We appreciate you for being here. Guess what, Titus, you in the building. We appreciate Titus. you. Uh, NEC. <laughs> NEC in the building. Wait, wait, wait. Who are we? L-R-C! Yes. NEC too, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness. Look at this. L-R-C family still in here? Okay, we got some West Coast. Oh, that's Pastor Shea Crockett. He, he's excited to preach tomorrow. I'm excited that he's here with us. Marissa, thanks for coming through. Let us know. Where are you tuning in from? Um, and guys, don't be upset at me, but I got to put this up. L-R-C still in the building. Come on. <laughs> Come on. If you're from Northeastern <laughs> Conference, I need y'all to show up in the comment section. Let me know because we got Madam President over here. She's looking for an NEC Just comment. NEC we next to that. your name. Come on. Put it in the comment section. We appreciate each and every one of y'all. This was here. Chesney was here. Ingrid be here. All of it. All of it. I'm seeing. Oh, SAC. We got. Okay. Okay. L 
Goodness gracious. Listen, y'all. NEC, here we go. NEC. Thank you. Thank you, Phillips. Come on now. <laughs> Represent. Don't let them call us out. Amen. Oh, Deborah's in hey, here. Okay. Hey, come on, I, Deborah. Adventure is in the house. Uh-huh. I knew, uh-huh. I knew like, once Adventure is again. You lead a gen- You done started something now. You called us out. We represent. Amen. Oh, we got SEC in here. Well, listen, we, we can be here all night. Just let us know where you're tuning in from. We appreciate you for coming through and for sharing this opportunity with us in this Wait, reset. I know there's somebody from the West Coast in here. Somebody, oh, somebody man. from the West Coast. Does somebody, <laughs> can somebody show some love from the West Coast? I know it's early. I know it's early, but can we can we get some love in the West Coast? Oh, come, on, come on, come on. We really did NEC. start something. We did start something. We did start oh, something. NEC. It's all I'm over. Be disappointed. All right. All right. We got LRC and hey, Pamela Bryan. That's my fam right there. Mm-hmm. Listen, West Coast, show up for your boy. Pastor Han and I rough. Listen, tonight's going to be a phenomenal night, but we want to make sure you're prepped and ready. Do this for a share. Just press the share button, get the word out there. This is an opportunity for you to be a digital disciple. Mm -hmm. Um, You can be an online virtual evangelist. Just Mm -hmm. let someone know that we're here having a great time at the Beta Reset 2024 week of prayer. I think one of the best ways to start and to launch is with prayer. Isn't that right? Well, listen, we have somebody who is from LRC, um, who's going to be leading us in prayer. This is a mighty man of faith. This is my brother from another mother. Um, None other than the one and only Sandrew King is here in the virtual building. Sandrew is, by the way, he's our youth coordinator. He makes sure all all of our federations and our youth ministries are working well. Thank you for coming through, sir. I appreciate the invitation. Listen, listen, I, I know the West Coast will show up during the, the broadcast of this three hours from now. They'll put their comments in and say that they were there. It's OK. Um, and I'll preach. Listen, listen, I appreciate the beta ministry. It was the beta ministry that allowed me and my daughter to travel to West Virginia, some, Virginia Beach some years ago. And we were able to experience God in a different way. It was beta that allowed me to meet some dynamic pastors when I went to Florida on a couple of times. It was beta uh, mm-hmm. that allowed me to grow in ministry. So I appreciate the beta ministry. Do not take it for granted that what you have here today will always be here or has always been here. This is a special ministry that's carved out, carved out to grow youth in a black church. And we un- need to understand that if we don't grow the youth in our home church, yeah. we'll lose them from our homes. Mm. Amen. Wow. Wow. That man came in with the word. Doc. <laughs> and, and, and I want to pray. And I was uh, I'm creating some holy habits because my, my friend preached a sermon this 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 Sabbath that convicted me and two of my friends and we've been reading the word and one of the holy habits that I've created, I'm trying to develop is prayer and reading my word. And in my word, I realized, Pastor Doggett, that Jesus, even in Gethsemane, though he was praying for us, he was interceding, praying for himself. He was interceding on our behalf. Yeah, he was praying for strength that he could complete the mission for us, not Mm -hmm. for himself. So and on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That was an intercessory prayer. Mm. So let's go to the Lord and pray. If you have any prayer requests, I may not be able to see every name. I may not be able to see every prayer request, but I would have you now to put your prayer request in the comment section, comment sessions so that we can pray for you and for those comments. Let us go to the Lord and pray for the first five seconds of this prayer. I just need you to clear your hearts and your mind of anything that would be distracting, distracting you from going to the Lord fully in prayer. So clear your hearts, clear your minds, open up that vessel between you and the Lord that he can hear you and you can hear him. Let's just close our eyes and clear our hearts and minds for 10 seconds, five seconds. Father in heaven, we come before you now, not only for the speaker who's going to speak today, not for the for the youth leaders that are listening to this evening, Lord, but for every young person that is represented in the conferences that are represented that make up Batum. Father, there are young people who are struggling with their identity, struggling with their with their connection with you. They are struggling to read their word, to pray, to hear your voice, because the noise of this word world has gotten so loud. 
that they no longer can clearly hear what you're saying to them at this time. The pollution that they're listening to on the, on the, on the radios and, and through social media, the, the lies that are being told to them on TV, Lord, they are being pulled away. But I ask you, Lord, that as we come together in this reset moment, that we become the anchors, that we become the anchors that are connected to the chains, that are connected to the youth, that hold them to the church, Lord, that keep them connected to you, Father. We ask now that you move on parents who have hardened their hearts to their, their wayward children, Lord. Let them take on the mindset of Job, Lord. They did just pray for them in case they offend you. Lord, let them take on the mindset of the of the um, prodigal father, the son, the father of the prodigal son, Lord, that they are continually waiting at the window, waiting for them to return. And when they return, there's going to be a party for them. Lord, I ask you, the speaker of the hour, the leaders of this great organization, that in these last days that we're doing your will, not our desires in these days. This is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. We thank you so much for taking us to the throne. Amen. Um, we believe God has heard and he's answered already the prayers that you just pray. God bless you. Um, we appreciate yeah. you for coming through. And, and we are LRC. Yeah. <laughs> LRC. <laughs> just going to drop it like that. We appreciate you, man. Listen, Sanju's an awesome leader and minister. And again, you just saw it. He's a prayer warrior. Um, at this time, just want to pass it over to you, Madam President, as we're seeking to just inform the people of a great collaboration opportunity um, when it comes to how those who are tuning in can help support the ministry that we are part of. Absolutely. Excited to do it with my with my partner in no crime, uh, Pastor Hananiah Ruff, who is pushing and wearing the shirt already. Listen, when, when did, what year did you graduate? I don't want to tell your age. Uh, Pastor Ruff, what year did you graduate? Yeah, we don't we don't we don't. Um, OK, no problem. But we were there together <laughs> um, to, to, to tell people's graduation years. I mean, if we, we doing that, you know. <laughs> bad. But listen, yeah. as long ago as it was, Oakwood still has that impact on your life. And amen. Life. amen. 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 And we just want to share and spread the love. We are raising $10,000, the low bar for God. That's what we're pressing. We believe if it's, if it's possible, that it is possible. And if it's possible that you have 100 people that give you $100, then we make it. And as a matter of fact, JD, you know what I realized? Just from the viewership, if the viewership, if everybody that viewed it gave ten dollars, we'd be there already. Oh, we'd mm. already be there. That's right. I mean, it's just that simple. Yeah. So get online. Ten thousand dollars. Half of it will go to Beta and all of our ministries that you mentioned, and the other half will go to a scholarship to an Oakwood College student. Or if we can make multiple scholarships, we can do that. So let's open up our wallets, open up our hearts, and help a student. And who knows? They may see you in heaven and say that you had a role in helping them get their life right by allowing them yeah. to be in the environment where they can see God. So please yeah. come on, jump on, donate. You can even mail it in. Just look at the post uh, if you want to check, but we made it really easy for you. God bless you. Looking forward to it. We're going to do this in Jesus name. Absolutely. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And I can't wait for us to celebrate the $10,000 that we are going to be able to provide that will help again these these ministries that beta is spearheading and these students at oakwood university and just in case you needed just an encouragement wanted to put this up on the screen for you this is again one of the reasons why we're asking you to give we want you to give toward this university that's it enter to learn the part to serve. to serve. That's it. That's it. We appreciate all of you who've donated thus far. And tonight, y'all, I'm excited. Listen, I'm in Lake Region Conference. I'm the director of Young Adult Ministries here. But I, coming to Lake Region, was privileged to meet a very important individual. This is tonight our youth director, Pastor Earl Baldwin. He's known as PB&J. And this is a man 
of faith who has been so welcoming. He's been so encouraging to my family and I. And I just want to tell him I appreciate him. And tonight I know we are in for a treat. I got a question, Dr. Paula, Madam President. I got a question, my brother, on the West Coast, none other than Pastor Hannah and Ira. Are y'all ready for the word tonight? I'm ready. I am, I am waiting, anticipating, man. I'm excited for the word. I'm excited. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. It is. It is that time now where we're going to hear a song of preparation that's going to warm our hearts. But before we hear that song, we want to hear a little bit more about the speaker who's going to be delivering tonight's message. Pastor Earl Baldwin Jr. serves as the youth director of the Lake Region Conference. He is married to the beautiful Janika Baldwin, and together they have five amazing children. Pastor Baldwin earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Business Administration and a Master of Arts degree in Youth Ministry from Andrews University. Pastor Baldwin enjoys playing basketball and table tennis and is a diehard New York Knicks fan. Pastor Baldwin strives to show the love of God wherever he goes and to be a man after God's own heart. Let's welcome Pastor Earl Baldwin Jr. to the Beta Reset Worship Experience.
up this space. My world, my world needs you right now. My world needs you right now. Show me your face. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I uh, just want to start off by simply saying, praise the Lord. Anyone else can testify that we need more Jesus in our lives? I want to give a brief disclaimer right now. I want to start off by saying thank you to all those that have been praying. Um, again, this past weekend um, was not feeling the best. The voice left completely, but it is coming back and standing here in faith, standing here in faith just declaring that God is good. God is good. As I get to stand alongside my beta family, just want to give a shout out to our LRC family, our LRC family. What's up, LRC? I want to give a special uh, shout out to our president. Again, uh, Pastor Garth Gabriel, our secretary, Doc Abe. Again, our treasurer, um, Elder Nichols, and the entire crew. If you're from LRC, go ahead and just put LRC in the chat real quick. But again, needless to say, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And I want to give a shout out to all those that believe in the name of Jesus. If you believe in the name of Jesus, let's type amen in the chat. And that we serve a prayer answering God, all the different recipes. I got my pineapple juice. I got the water. I got the prayers, the whole nine. and just. In this moment, just want to surrender um, to God in this moment. Major shout out to um, my, my brothers who have gone before, um, Uncle Stu, to the Dr. Ramon, and for those yet to come. And all I want to do, Lord, is simply pass the baton, pass the baton, and continue to keep this gospel message alive, this gospel message alive. I want to speak to you guys for a second. On this title, knowing is not enough. Knowing is not enough. What I just start off by putting this text before you, and it simply says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Family, there, there's texts and there are texts when we when we grow as Christians. And what do I mean? What do I mean? What do I mean? When we um, decided to have this week of prayer some time ago and we were going to set aside speakers, I just knew in my heart of hearts that JD was going to be speaking to represent Lake Region Conference. And lo and behold, this little sneaky guy calls me a couple of weeks ago and says, hey, PB and J, will you speak? And family, I want to just come as real as I can to you right now. My initial inclination was like, nah, dude, you got it. But there's something that God has been doing in my life. And, and God has been calling and pressing me to places of discomfort. And, and, and this is why this text means so much to me. When, when God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Family, I need for us to understand that what God is calling us to sometimes is not always going to be comfortable. It's not always going to be easy. But what we have to do is trust. I, I was so quick. You know, my thought process was like, hey, call JD and simply say, yo, bro, I lost my voice. All of these different things are happening. But I believe that God impregnated me with a word for you guys tonight. And on, on last night, the doctor spoke, and I praise God he's a doctor because I've seen, you know, five kids delivered in my household. And one of the things that I know the doctors do, they see how far you're dilated. Before you know, you have to check the contractions, how close the contractions are, and how far the person's dilated. And I'm here to testify that I am fully dilated in Jesus Christ. And, and what God has put on my heart. It, it, it is so important for our young people, for our young adults, and even for our adults, 
who have not completely surrendered to hit that reset button right now. You see, 2024 has just started. And for so many of us, the new year comes with, with so much feelings of hope and optimism. Yo, gym memberships increase. Yo, journals are, are, are fresh and people come to the new year with this anticipation that is gonna be different from last year. But there's a problem that, that manifests itself. And this is what we're going to be wrestling with tonight, fam, is the fact that after a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, what tends to happen is those resolutions, those plans for better quickly fade away. And we fall back into to, to, to old habits. For many of us, we're like water. What do you mean, PBJ? You have to understand this water follows the path of least resistance. And in our spiritual journey, for so many of us, we, we tend to follow in the path of least resistance, but that is not what our text told us. You see, the text simply says, trust in the Lord, not with some, not with most, but with all our hearts. And fam, this, this, this reset week of prayer, it, it ain't no play play. This is, this is the moment someone's life is going to change forever. We, someone is going to trace back to this week when their lives change forever, not because of how good we are, but because of how good God is. You see, God has been wrestling and fighting with us, and he wants us to understand this, this, this process of surrender. It's, it's not natural to us. We struggle with it. We, 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 we want to take up the reins of our life. We want to hold the steering wheel of the, of the car of our life and steer our lives into glory. You see, we've been fed these images we're being bombarded by these images of what success looks like. And when we look at what the world says success looks like, and when we read the Bible, like verses like this, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Family, it puts us at odds with God. At the very nature, we have to understand, the Bible says that our heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. Who can understand it? And this is why I, I cringe when my young people say when they're living in error and my older folks living in error says, God knows my, what? Heart. Because God understands the heart condition of humanity. And this is why he's saying to us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, family. And it is a process. Remember this, family. The longest journey starts with one step. One step. It is a process of learning how to surrender. It doesn't just happen. Just like you, you see these individuals who run the marathons, right? They don't just wake up one morning, ah, I think I'm going to go run the Boston Marathon. Our bodies are not equipped for that. And the devil tries to trick us and to trick you and to trick me into thinking at any moment, you could turn it on. At any moment, you could, you could, you could change your circumstances and your life. It's just one book away, one self-help book away, and your life can change. But family, the process of dying to self it is one that is done day by day, moment by moment, one step at a time. And I, I said before you right now as a pastor, and this was not always my aspirations, fam, because I didn't always want to be this. You understand? And I, truth be told, if I could do something else and have peace of mind, I'll do it. Why? Because pastoring ain't no play play. The, the burden, the headache, the gray hairs, the constant uh, uh, taking on of, of certain things can be overwhelming. But I stand before you, I sit before you now, one who has been broken 
by God, one who has been stretched by God, one who has, has been pushed by God into places of discomfort. But I have made up, made up my mind that I will trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding that process, that process, I have to know that he knows more than me. He loves me and he's all powerful. There's nothing that God calls us to that he won't see us through. I'm trusting him to hold my voice up and it not be too much of a distraction. I'm trusting that God will prevent this cough from taking over in this very moment. But watch this now, because to, to get some context, I wanna take you in the Rolodex of history in my heart. You see, a couple of years ago, and a couple of years ago, I got a call from the Lake Region Conference inviting me to be a pastor in this conference. And unlike so many of my colleagues who had calls coming out of the seminary, coming out of college, it took me four years, fam, four years stressing, God, did I hear you right? God, is this really for me? I'm talking about the, the highs and the lows were crazy. I'm talking about dealing with racism on, 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 on a level that made me question, question my Christianity when a conference president and a, a, a ministerial secretary for a conference, their first question to me is, what are you? I'm like, what do you mean, what am I? And they have the audacity to say, are you black? And they go on to, to proceed and say that, do you know that the church that you are applying to is a white church? Family, this is my God who has seen me through all of these different things. And, and what you see sitting before you is still a work in progress. And I have no problem just this airing it out because I know how big God is. I know how powerful God is. And just as my, my, my pastor uh, uh, was sharing the importance of remembering the past, the Feast of Boots, understanding that, again, we are to bear fruit. I, again, in yesterday, I want to take this journey with you because when I received that call, family, everything in that moment started to, to look better. It started to look different. And JD, this is what I did with my first check, my guy. I decided to go get myself a computer. Watch this now. Not just any computer. You have to understand, when I was in the seminary, the, I had a computer where the hinges were broken. It was hanging. I had keys missing from my lab, from my, my key top, uh, the, the, the keyboard. You understand? And I decided I was going to go get a computer. So I need for y'all to imagine this young preacher walking into Best Buy with my first check in my hand. And family, I walked into Best Buy, right? And I didn't take my regular pathway because normally I would have gone to the clearance and to the sales section. I didn't go there. I didn't go to the open box section. I didn't go there. I went right to where all the brand new computers were. And this is what happens next, y'all. I'm standing there and the sales reps are standing in the corner. Can you see them? They're sizing me up. Is he a buyer? Or is he just a looker? And sure enough, your boy had money in his pocket ready to buy a brand new computer to do God's work. And needless to say, the sales rep came over and I walked out of Best Buy with the top-notch Sony computer. Watch this now. It had an i7 quad processor. It had dual graphic card. It had it had touch screen, so you know for sure it wasn't a Mac. Shots fired. Boop, boop. Hey, watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. This thing had a CD DVD writer. And I went home and I was blown away because I, I, I'll go to the website. And the moment I click before my finger could even come off of that thing, the screen's already loaded. I would try to play videos, what normally would have taken forever. I would have seen the wheel on my old computer going like this. This thing just popped up, said, boom, here I am. I was like, my goodness, Lord, thank you for providing me with this new computer to do your work. But fam, don't, don't leave me just yet, because this is what happened. Within a couple months now, this is what played out. What was taking just a couple seconds, two, three seconds, started to take 
nine, 10 seconds. I'm starting to see my pages taking longer to load. And I'm like, yo, what's really good? After a while, it progressively got worse. So guess what? It was a brand new computer, y'all. So your boy walked right back into Best Buy, walked up to the Geek Squad, and I was like, hey, guys, I got a problem. I just spent all this money on this computer, and it is not performing the way that it used to. So then Geek, uh, the Geek Squad guys grabbed the computer. They started to check my, 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 my computer. They looked at the information. They did some diagnos diagnostic, and they realized that I had some software on my computer that was conflicting with my operating system. I was like, oh, my goodness, but nothing's wrong with this, this software. This is good software. He says, no, it's not the problem with the software. Sometimes even good, legit software could, 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 could mess up the operating system and cause it to conflict. But then he said, hold up now. I've just found this packet here, and it looks like there's some malware on your stuff. Unknown to me, someone was trying to hack into my computer. And he says, but don't worry, guy, we got you. So he did some click, 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 click. And all of a sudden, he reset my computer family. And he handed that computer back to me. And once I tested it, sure enough, it was back to tip top speed. And I could still touch the screen because it wasn't a Mac. <laughs> so here we go now. Here we go. This is an important point that I don't want y'all to miss. Because I had friends around me who were saying, yo, yo, Red, yo, PBJ, what are you complaining about? Your computer is still faster than my computer. Listen to me, somebody. Listen to me, somebody. Because what they are seeing and what they are experiencing is faster than what they are accustomed to. But this is it, though. I tested the computer out the box. I knew what it was supposed to be able to do. And here it is now, because I saw what the original specs and the original speed was supposed to, even that five to seven second delay was significant to me because I had a point of reference. I'm talking to my young people right now because we're going somewhere with this. Keep that point locked to the side because you see, there is a virus that is affecting us as Christians. And it could be nailed down as J1243. What did I say? Put it in the chat if you got this. J1243. Are y'all there? I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the chat before I move. Making sure y'all not sleeping on the brother. There we go. J1243. And here it is now. This, 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 this virus that is affecting so many of us. I'm talking about from generation to generation. COVID has nothing on this virus. This virus has been plaguing and tearing us apart from the inside out. And I, I know you probably want to know what is J1243. I know some of you went to Siri and to Google already trying to get ahead of the preacher, but hold your horses, slow down just a little bit, because here it is now in the book of John, in the book of John, this thing blew my mind when I saw it, blew my mind, and it's in plain sight. It's so simple, but yet so powerful. It's, it's, it's so common, yet so profound. J1243, JD, if you could put that on the screen for me. John chapter 12, verse 43. Look at this simple passage and understand the magnitude of what we're reading. For they love, for they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. Have mercy. For they love the, the, you, you have to get this now. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. There is a fundamental problem that is plaguing our society, that is plaguing our families, that are pl that's plaguing our lives, plaguing our churches and beyond. We have become a people who care more about what the people think than what God thinks. Yo, this, this ain't one of them comfortable messages. But I will trust in the Lord with all my, and lean not on my own understanding. In all my ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct my path. 
family. This reset that we're talking about requires an introspective look at our lives. Too often, you've been going to people who say what you want to hear. You go and get information and, and, and you, you reject things that challenge you, but you, you, you hold on to things that, that are nice and fluffy and, and make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. But do we realize that we are in war? We're in war. There's a battle that has taken place. And when was the last time, when was the last time in the middle of war, whether it be World War I, World War II, the Iraq War, when someone says, yo, 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 stop shooting. Let me check the score in this next game. Yo, let me see what, 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 yo. Folks taking pictures. Shots firing. Yo, it's crazy out here. World star. Nah, nah. You see, when it's in war, our mindset changes. Everything is filtered through the islands of war. And this is what's happening right here. If you could put that text back on the screen, JD, because I want my family, but show from verse show from verse 42 to give the folks some context. It says, nevertheless, many, even of the authorities, believed in him. But for the fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it. Y'all listen to this. They believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they made a conscious choice not to trust in the Lord with all their heart, not to, 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 to they did, they realized that they weren't going to lean on, 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 on uh, they were going to lean on their own understanding because here it is in the, in the book of John, this is Jesus's last major and public miracle is that was what's happening, what's leading up to this. Because when you understand what's happening, Jesus got word, Jesus got word that his friend was sick. His friend was, his name was Lazarus. And Lazarus was sick, and Jesus was just a, a couple of miles away when he received word. And someone's going to understand what I'm saying because you've been crying out to God, and you've been hearing that he's just a couple of miles away, and you can't, for the life of you, understand why your prayer hasn't been answered yet. You can't, for the life of you, understand why you haven't received deliverance yet. Yo, you've been an adventurer, a pathfinder, an AY leader, a deacon, an elder. And yet still, you can't get your prayers answered? Bet. So here it is now. Jesus takes his time. Sometimes he takes his time in our lives because he has to get us to hit the reset button. We have expectations of Jesus where we tell him what to do and we expect him to bless it. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm not the only one. We, we don't pray and ask God, what is your will? We say, God, this is my will. Bless it. And when he doesn't bless it, we have a problem with him. When he doesn't do what we say, as if we're the God and he's supposed to follow us, there's a problem. So Jesus now shows up four days too late in their minds. Four days too late in their minds. And he shows up. People are crying. They're sobbing. Why? Because of failed expectation. New Year's, uh, New Year's resolutions that fell apart before the, 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 the month even changed. You understand? You went back to sleeping around. You went back to smoking that weed. You went back to hitting that, that Hennessy and the absolute. You understand? Though you said you wasn't going to drink no more. You said you weren't going to sleep around no more. But you're right back in it. Why? Because four days Later, Jesus shows up and he shows up now and watch this now. Watch this. We already signed it off. We already said it's too late. He smells. He stinks. Oh, God, go ahead and leave. But he's like, nah, I'm on assignment. He's, this is the thing. Jesus understood that we needed to experience certain pains and certain disappointments in order for us to hit the reset button because we have become too comfortable. Because you see this whole process of trusting in God and leaning in a, a, not on your own understanding, as I said, it's a process. So God will push us a little further each time. And the problem is too many of us are trying to use the blessings for yesterday for the problems for today. 
And that don't work because the problems grow. The problems grow. The problems get bigger. The more the enemy realizes that you and I are a threat. He comes at us with temptations. When you're just minding your business and all of a sudden those, those X-rated pics start to pop up on your phone. He knows that you, you're trying to get over that pornography. He knows that you're trying to get over your temper and that person cuts you off and, and shoots you the bird. And everything inside of you wants to just go after them. But watch this now. So Jesus, Jesus, Jesus shows up four days later and he tells them, roll the stone away. Roll away your doubts. Roll away your frustrations. Roll away your depression. Roll away your anxiety. Why? Because I'm here. And, and Jesus shows up then and he simply says, Lazarus, my guy, come forth. Come out here. We got things to do. And people are looking at Jesus like he done gone buck wild. Like he lost his mind because this was unheard of. But sure enough, here comes this, this image of this man wrapped in a cloth at the entrance of this tomb. Family, this is the power of our God. He can speak life into, into some of the biggest uh, uh, frustrations that we have in life. Situations that we think are over. Marriages that we thought was done. A uh, 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 prognosis with health that we thought we were over. Stage four ain't nothing for Jesus. So my question to you is this. Watch now. Watch now. Watch now as we walk a little bit further. Is what do you have to let go of? Before you can get to the place where God can have his way with you. Here we go now. Here we go. I heard the doctor, the doctor, the doctor on yesterday was using some words. And I smiled. I was like, look at the Holy Spirit. He talked about the botanist. And I know some of us like, what's a botanist? Again, these are scientists that study the biology of plants, right? And I, he, you know, I, I knew of a botanist too. So here we go now. Uh, Peter Raven is a botanist from Muse um, Missouri. And he studied um, deciduous trees. And these are trees that drop their leaves in the fall, right? And here it is. Now we're talking about letting go now. And these trees understand something that we as Christians have to understand. You see, as the fall approaches, the sunlight starts to get less and less. The temperature starts to get colder and colder, and the tree has to follow Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Why? Because this is it now. The trees have a chemical that is released to let them know that fall is approaching. The very leaves that were a blessing to them through the process of photosynthesis that sucked in the carbon dioxide and let out the oxygen and the water, they had to make a conscious choice. You Though it was a blessing in a season, I have to let it go for right now if I want to live. And these trees make a conscious decision guided by God, their creator, because they understand that God knows what he's talking about. This is why the, the leaves change color and we see the bright reds and the oranges. And here it is now. If you were like me, you may have thought that the leaves fall to the ground because the wind tends to blow a whole lot more. No, 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 no. I told you guys, I know of a botanist. And this Mr. Raven did some studies and what he realized in the tree, there's something called an abscission cell. A what, everybody? An abscission cell. The root word for that is equivalent to scissors. The tree understands this now. Shouldn't we? Watch this now. The tree says, God said, let go of these leaves. And inside of the tree, they release certain enzymes. And right where the leaf meets the stem, they form abscission cells and it blocks off the nutrients. It blocks off the water. And what it is saying to the leaf is, I want to live. Get off of me. Get off of me. Get off of me. Because this is our problem in our life. Because we have lived in a world where we put the praise of man above that of God, we find ourselves at the clinic 
talking about doctor, is there a cure for that? We, we find ourselves at the, the, the clinic trying to, to end life before it even begins. We find ourselves dealing with sexual identity crisis because we don't want to trust what God has to say. We find ourselves loving money and loving things of this world that are meant to kill us. We are holding on to poison. We are holding on to fire, burning ourselves, but we don't want to let it go because we think that's what we're supposed to do because we want the praise of men. We want to get likes. We want to get more followers on the gram. We want to, and this is problematic. The tree understands through the process of abscission, let it go, let it go. And as Christians, as we see what is coming our way, we have to get to the place where we too say, we're going to let it go. There are certain habits that we have to let go and hit the reset button. There, 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 there are certain people we have to let go and, 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 and hit the reset button. Listen to me, family. This is the same Jesus that they rejected who, 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 who turned water into wine. This is the same Jesus who healed a crippled man. This is the same Jesus who, who said to the man with leprosy, be healed. This is the same Jesus who says to a storm, stage four, stage five, what? My name is Jesus, done, be gone, peace, be still. This is the same Jesus who says to a dead man, Lazarus, after four days of decay, yo, I'm speaking to your molecules. I'm speaking to your atoms now. And I said, live, live. So watch me now. This is the Jesus that is telling us to let go. And we have a problem and we struggle to, to let go of things. Why? Because our friend said so, because that book that Oprah rep recommended said so, they don't have a heaven to take us to. So who are we truly listening to, fam? Who are we truly listening to? Who has our heart? Trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. Knowledge apart from God. Ain't nothing. Watch this. If I were to ask you guys how to get good grades, Dr. Olivier, she's an exceptional student. She would tell me, Baldwin, you need to study. You need to turn in your assignments. You need to show up to class. Take good notes. Bet. The problem is we know what to do, but how many of us have all A's? Right? Not, knowing is not enough. The summer is coming up. I got a wedding to go to in Jamaica, y'all. And, and I, if I were to say, yo, I want to walk around with my shirt off. Yeah. I want to get this six pack out of the brown bag. Yo, how do I get in shape? Y'all going to tell me, yo, Baldwin, PBJ, work out, exercise, eat properly. Y'all can tell me that what needs to be done. But why is it that we're all in, in good shape? Because knowing is not enough. You see, this is the thing. This is the thing, family. As we navigate through life, I need for you to get this. Faith is not developed in the crisis of our lives. When we're dealing with stuff, when we're going through stuff and God is allowing us to deal with disappointment, that's not the time to develop faith. Faith is not developed in a crisis. The crisis simply reveals the quality of faith we already had. So this progression is God simply saying, you passed this test, now I could push you a little further. God is gonna say to us, I wanna make this plain, especially for my youngsters. I'm gonna use this story, I'm gonna use this story as we get ready to wrap up. There's a, a, a swimmer, Olympic, uh, you know, Michael Phelps type dude could swim like, yo, like a fish. He goes to this beach in one of the islands and the signs are posted, beware of the rip current. And this man goes out to swim, y'all. And while he's swimming, one of the, the, the currents started to, to pull him out, out to sea and he starts to scream out, help, help. One of the people in the beach seeing what's going on, they turn around and they run to find a lifeguard. There was no lifeguard around, so they had to run all the way up the hill to try to find a lifeguard to save this guy. 
Listen to me, somebody. When they come back, when they come back, they can't see him in the water. They just knew he drowned. They just knew his life was over. But all of a sudden, on the edge of the beach, they saw this, this, this clump of a person on the ground. The, 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 the waves of the beach are splashing against his lifeless body. They thought he was dead. They come up to him and he's gasping for air. He's like, they're like, yo, how did you get out of that current? The guy said, the lifeguard says, yo, you must be an amazing swimmer because nobody gets out of that current. Nobody has gone into that current and survived when that riptide starts to pull like that. And the swimmer says this, yo, listen to me, somebody. The swimmer says this. He says, yo, I was swimming as hard as I can. I was kicking. I was paddling, trying to swim through the current, but it was too strong. And then I remembered something my father said so many years ago. Listen to me, fam. He said, if you ever get caught in the current, don't swim against it. Let it take you out to sea. Let it take you out where you feel discomfort. Why? Because the deeper the water, the weaker the current. And watch me now. So he allowed the current to take him out. And then he was able to swim around and get out of that situation. Some of us think that we're going to be successful and trust in the Lord with all our heart. And we're going to will ourselves into heaven. No, nah. if you if you think that the devil got you, you have to understand that, th that this process of, 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 of trusting in God is not something we do. It is something we allow. The Bible says, I stand at the door and I knock. It is not us going out to show the devil how bad we are because we watch boys in the hood or menace to society. We think we gangster. Nah. Watch me, the devil will whip us every single day, every single moment. The only reason we're going to be successful is because Jesus says, I got it from here. Reset. I got it from here. Family, family, I hope you're hearing what God has to say to us today. God has given us an invitation. He has said, I got it from here. Why are we still trying to take on things that we were never meant to carry? Why are we still trying to fight battles that we can never win? It is not about willpower. It's not about how, how, how strong we could swim. Family is how good we could surrender. That's your message for today, folks. That's your message for today. Knowing is not enough. And God is calling each and every one of us a little bit higher each time. A little bit higher each time. That current's going to take you where you feel a little uncomfortable. The water's going to start to feel a little cold and send a tingle down your spine. But he has promised this, fam. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And this is it. This is it. This is it. This is it as we close, as we close. Remember that Sony knew the specs of that computer. Jesus Christ knows the specs to our heart. He knows what we can handle. He knows what's going to be in conflict. So when he says, love not the world or the things in the world, it's not because he's trying to keep something that's good for you away from you. He's doing it for our benefit. It is that sneaky, stinking devil that is trying to trick us into thinking that he's trying to keep something away from us that is for our benefit. Yo, fam, let's hit that reset button. Let's put the devil on notice that we ain't playing around no more because we're going to tag God in because knowing is not enough. Whoa. Mm. Mm. Ouch. 
my gosh. <laughs> we are grateful for this power packed word. We celebrate what God has done. To, can you all just put your hand? Can we celebrate what God has done tonight? That he provided through his manservant, who even in the midst of a sore throat, hmm. lost voice, mm -hmm. God still used him to amplify his divine voice and will in this place. Amen. And someone received the word. And guess what? I believe PB and J that people all over the world were hitting that reset button. Amen. We were surrendering Amen. ourselves to the Lord. Mm -hmm. We want to say thank you. PB and J, you are a gift. My goodness. And we appreciate you for pushing through. Madam President. I, Madam I gotta I gotta get another major. I think I'm gonna go back to school maybe and get a degree in botany. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that yeah. thing seems rich. Yo, know, by the time he's talking about, you know, it wasn't the wind. But it's the construction, the way that the tree that God designed, that it knows there's a time. And he used some fancy word where it knows it's time to cut things off and let loose. I was like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. We got to release in order to have another season of growth. I think that was just that was one of the many powerful things that I received from this message. And it, it, it wasn't, you know, like you said, a feel good message. It was a keeping it real message. If we want to reset, then we've got to please God more than our desire to please man. And that's when we grow. And that's when we, ah, talking about allowing, you don't will yourself into hey. something. And you just have to allow God to do what mm. God does. I, I mean, it was just rich, rich with stuff that is going to stick in our minds and encourage us to reset throughout 2024. Thank you so much, PBNJ. Yeah, Absolutely. man. Hey, brother, man, I saw two things happen tonight. One, God kept your cough until you were done. Amen. Yes. Amen. I saw that cough. And he held it for you, man. I appreciate the work that God does, builds our faith when we see those things. And then the second thing, man, I want to live. Mm. Get off me. Mm. I yeah. want to live. Get off of me. Yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> look, family, look, we're about to lose it over here in this afterglow moment because the word of God was delivered with such power. But we want to do our part. Can we pray for the man of God? Can we pray for the preacher who took time, energy, and effort to prepare and deliver this message? Um, can you do us the honors, Pastor Ruff, to just pray for PB&J as he's delivered this word tonight? God, our Father, we thank you so much that you have uh, shown us uh, the validation of our faith. You, God, held his cough until the end of the delivery. Yes. Oh, we have been praying and we wanted to make sure, God, that that he was able to share that word and God, you made it happen. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for showing us yes. the validation of our faith. Yes. Oh God, I pray uh, for him and his family. He has poured into us something fantastic. Uh, we can't uh, uh, be stuck with the J123 problem where yeah. we're looking at men and, 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 and worrying about them. But God, we need, as uh, Dr. Griffin said last night, the audacity to not care about what men think, yeah. but to, to, to worry about your glory. Oh, God, thank you so much you. for giving us this word, for reminding us we want to live. Mm but we got to get this thing off of us mm. and trust you mm. in the process. Yes. In Jesus name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Before you leave, I know you're about to sign off PB and J get some, some to drink. Um, if you were blessed by tonight's message, can you just affirm the preacher tonight? Put it in the comment section. Let me see an amen. I see some folk who are clapping their hands. I see some people who are affirming that God showed up in a mighty way. We see you in the comment section and we thank you for engaging um, with us. And we know that God is going to, to take this message and each of you who are going to share, guess what? Someone that you know is going to be blessed by this message because you're not keeping it to yourself. Yeah. But please, 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 I know you received the message. I know you yourself are blessed. I know you received the, the challenge and you accepted it. You press that reset button, but do this for us. Do this for us, family. Can you please press, can you please press that share button? Press reset, 
but also press share because tonight's message, PBJ for real, like Doc just mentioned it. This was a real word, sincere, mm-hmm. power packed and clear. And we thank you for it. Get some rest, my brother. We love you, man. Hey, who are we, baby? L-R-C. N-E-C. Yes, amen. All right, all right, all right, all right. We'll let him go. We'll let him go. Man, tonight was great. Yes. <laughs> this was night three. Are y'all kidding me? Mm. <laughs> we, mm. we got we we got more on top of what we've already received this week. Mm-hmm. Sunday, we had Pastor Bryant Stewart who came through and delivered a word. Monday, we had Dr. Ramon Griffith who came through and delivered a word. And tonight. PB and J, Pastor Earl Baldwin Jr. came and delivered a word. And we have more. We got more. Tomorrow, y'all, should we drop? Hold on. I always got to get permission. Hold on. Excuse me. Madam President, uh, should we drop the flyer on him one time? Go ahead. All right. Listen, tomorrow. Hey, we got none other than the Pastor Shay Crockett. Shay, Shay. All the way down there. Hey, in Southeastern Conference, who's going to be uh, uh, joined by, of course, Madam President, Dr. Paula Olivier, as well as our brother from another mother up there in New York, Jonathan. And he's going to come through and bring the energy I'm grateful for for this. So y'all don't miss this. Tomorrow night, we want to make sure that you're here, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Pacific. And we know God is going to show up uh, again. Man, yes, he will. In any uh, closing remarks, anything that we need to, to, to say before we let the people marinate on the word tonight? Listen, share the gospel, share the love. Uh, remember our goal. I won't let you forget it. We're going to bless somebody else in a tangible way. Leave that on the screen for a second so they can scan it or type it in. Remember from just the viewership alone, if we had every viewer give $10, we'd be there already. Some of you can do better than 10. Some of you can do better than 25 or 50 or a hundred and give a thousand, whatever you can give towards this goal. We're going to bless somebody. And we know that God is going to bless us by the end of this week. I'm so, I'm so full of joy. Uh, from what I have seen God do this week thus far, and we're going to keep on pressing. Amen. Absolutely. Well, you heard it. Madam President told us to give. We're going to do that, and we'll be sure to, again, keep you abreast of what's going on, and we're going to give God praise. Hey, Pastor Hannah and I are up. Thank you for coming. All the way yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for having <laughs> me, man. I got a front row seat to this blessing tonight. Thank you so much. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, listen, y'all have a blessed night. Until we see you tomorrow night, peace.